Okay, YouTube land. Uh, this is a this is a video for some of you that don't know me that well. Um, I've been uh, commenting on a few people's channels and uh, some discussions in the comments and some discussions in emails that y'all don't really get the details of. You might hear something mentioned between uh, J.C. Smith Projects and myself. Uh, I uh, I email him a few times. Uh, right now, it's like I think it's a few times a day the last few days. But I have project ideas and stuff. Uh, the situation I'm in these days, I don't have a place to really do a project. I got a place I can set one. Um, I could do a minor thing or two there, but I can't go putting a cab on a frame and putting axles under a frame and um, setting a motor and a transmission in a frame and then setting the cab and front clip on. Uh, not only do I not have all the equipment to do it, I don't have the help to do it. There's a lot of things. You can overcome lack of equipment a lot of times with pure human strength. Yeah, you get six guys or eight guys, you can pick up a stripped down pickup cab. I've done it plenty of times before. Um, like an S10 cab, a regular cab, S10 cab, you know, 82 to 93 cab. Four guys can pick it up and pick it up off the frame and, uh, you know, set it on the floor. That's assuming that the bed's out of the way or there's no front clip on the truck. So, you know, front clip means the doghouse, the hood, the fenders, the core support. If that's off there and there's no motor and transmission in the way, you can carry it forward to the front of the frame and set it down on the ground. We've done stuff like that before. We've done stuff like that even when I had access to forklifts sometimes because you can damage stuff picking up with a forklift unless you do it just right. And that, that can be a problem. Um, when you're using old war to slap out equipment, it can be a real, real big problem. But uh, that's neither here nor there. These days, I don't have anybody that'll help me. Uh, my one car buddy that used to help me do projects he died in 2008 of cancer. He that left the state for a couple years. He left in, uh, I want to say his last trip up here was January of 03. And I took over his spot in the shop uh, with the business partner. Um, when Billy left for Florida, I took over. And I was in business with this guy who was a real piece of garbage. And he used my mother's illness as an excuse to run me out of business and steal over $100,000 from me. And, yeah, I, I used to have money. I had a lot of things. It used to be, I'd make, for every 1000 I made, I reinvested 700 in the business and 300 went to the bills. That, that was, that, I was planning that business to be my retirement. Uh, yeah, when I had enough money, I was just gonna sell everything, buy a piece of land, buy uh, or build a cabin, or have somebody build me a cabin, and retire down south. Well, it's neither here nor there now because it's gone. So, another car buddy of mine, uh, and I, we knew each other from back in the old MySpace days where a whole group of us hung out together. Uh, Ted didn't tell people, but he was in an accident. He was paralyzed from here down. And he didn't give people his real name on the internet. He used the name Jason on the internet. And it wasn't until he thought you're an all right enough guy that he wanted to talk to you on the phone or uh, sell you car parts. So he told you his real name. Well, at the time, this was, I think, about. 2009, um, 
It might have been 2010. Uh, I think it was, he sent me the parts December of 2009, then uh, we talked on the phone, I want to say January 2010. Because my one buddy had just had a kid at the time. And that's a buddy where I painted a car from him, for him. And he owes me $500. Well, guess what? I don't have a buddy and I never got my $500. <laughs> but I guess in a way that kind of works out because you know who's a piece of crud that you don't need in your life. Um, I talked to Ted on the phone. I want to say we were on the phone for probably two and a half, three hours. And I learned a lot about the man. Um, but like I said, he was paralyzed from about here down on the chest. Um, he was driving his truck and some guy with no insurance lived at home with mommy and daddy, had no assets. And this is in South Carolina. Was drunk and high ran a stop sign t-boned his truck and his truck went side over side and paralyzed him from you know mid chest down in a wheelchair ted managed to get a 68 chevelle that needed the motor rebuilt and needed some body work and needed painted the man in a wheelchair rebuilt a 396 put it in himself I uh, got some people to help him get the fenders on, but he took the whole doghouse off and put it back on with people helping him and got everything lined up right. Had the car painted and using two broomsticks and his son in the passenger seat, drove the car up and down his private drive. That there is a man with determination and a man that loved his cars. Uh, but unfortunately, we lost Ted to cancer too. Um, it was 2014. Uh, I talked to him the one time and he said he just wasn't feeling good. And then, uh, he said he hadn't been out to the barn to get me another box of parts. He, you know, he wanted to go out there to his one barn and get me a box of parts to send up because I was selling them on eBay. After the fees came out, we were splitting the money 50-50. So he wanted to send me another box of parts that he couldn't identify, oddball stuff. Um, and the man had probably close to one million car parts. He would just go to dealerships and buy entire semi-trailer loads. Uh, and he started doing that in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, anyways... So he told me he wasn't feeling good and he was going to go to the doctor. And I called back about a week later or something. And uh, he told me uh, told me how bad it was. Stage 4 pancreas cancer. It wasn't a couple weeks later he was gone. Um, one of my other car buddies uh, that I knew from back in those days too. He was in an accident in 2015 and uh, got hit here in the head while he was working doing direct TV stuff. Ain't nobody sure what really happened. Um, the one guy that would know got hit in the head really hard and suffered permanent brain damage. And as a result of that permanent brain damage, his personality has changed to where he's attacking all of his friends personally. And he's just going from one of us to the next, to the next, to the next, running us all off. Starting drama, driving wedges in between people, uh, using two and three different Facebook accounts and uh, drawing you into drama and starting stuff. That's because he's not right in the head anymore. Yeah, he actually had, uh, got hurt here and uh, actually had uh, brain tissue that's died off in the frontal lobes. So, yeah, you can literally say that guy's hit in the head, and it's true. It's kind of sad, because he used to be a real nice, upstanding guy. Now he's turned into, uh, unfortunately, you know, a, a piece of crud. And, uh, you know, I'm, my one other buddy that uh, we co-owned the S10 Blazer together, 
Uh, we took that thing. It started off life as a two-wheel drive. And uh, we figured out that the frame was bent because it kept blowing transmissions. And it kept binding motors up. And, uh, you know, bad things were happening. So went through a rod. We went and got a four-wheel drive frame of the same year. A GMC Jimmy, which is what the thing was anyway. It says the 89 GMC Jimmy. I called it S10 Blazer. I always called it the Blazer. Uh, it was an 89 GMC Jimmy two-wheel drive, 4.3 automatic. Uh, we went and got a 89 four-wheel drive, 4.3 automatic two-door Jimmy that had been in an accident. And uh, the guy had ran into somebody, or like ran in the back of a semi-trailer. And like the sit my behind him, it tapped him in the tailgate, crinkled the roof. So the frame had a bend to it, kind of, you know, like a banana bend. It wasn't real noticeable. Uh, it did affect it years later when I put the body lift on. Uh, I had to shave down the core support bushings to bring the core support back down because that's what we had done to take up for it. Because we didn't care about perfect. We just wanted the gaps to be somewhat serviceable didn't want things to hit uh that truck went for three years is at my buddy's farm and it didn't come out of four-wheel drive low range it went four thousand miles in low range towing cars around a farm uh but then i got it and i body lifted it and uh, put a posi carrier in it to replace the gov lock and did rear disc brake conversion and i had somebody that was helping me do the things i couldn't do um yeah it's like i'm not a welder uh years ago when i worked at the body shop the guy i worked for started teaching me weld and i welded quarter panels on a mustang and i welded on some other things but i'll tell you what uh, i'm not good at welding my hands shake too much I can't keep them steady when I need to. And that goes to a problem that I have, a medical condition. Ain't nothing we can do about it. Uh, and I don't want pity over it. It's just one of those things. Uh, it also precludes me from, you know, it precludes me from serving in the United States Navy, which I was going to enlist in. Uh, but, you know, I was 4F for service. It doesn't rule my life, but uh, it makes sometimes it's like, you know, I don't try to clean a fish because if I do, I probably cut my fingers off. And there's a few other things that I just don't do. I'd take a sawzall, cut a car apart surgically with it, but uh, you don't put a long, thin knife in my hand and expect me to clean a fish. It'll be full of bones, human and otherwise. Uh, but anyway, so my other buddy, he's yeah, the one I helped me. We did the blazer together. Uh, after he had kids, that was it. He's done. He, he uh, unless it's a Dodge Caravan project or an arcade game, or it comes to you helping him go get arcade games, he really doesn't want to do much. Now, as bad as that sounds, when my back was against the wall and I was moving, and the guy that I was helping out that was helping me move uh you know went full forced gump on us uh him and his wife and one of his kids showed up and spent about 12 hours and we got the rest of everything moved okay so that's the kind of friend he is it's like you know he he won't come do anything he won't come help with the car project he won't wouldn't come help me with my uh 99 f450 7.3 power stroke with a six speed manual yeah that's the low plus four plus overdrive manual um and he was a heavy diesel mechanic went to college for it has the tools for it he wouldn't come help me even though he owed me favors but when my back was against the wall and i needed help moving he come over here help me move things so i can't say too much bad about the guy except for he ain't no help in car projects. Uh, but he he always wants me to go help him with arcade game stuff with no payback. 
Uh, that's just how he is ever since he's had kids. Uh, some people get like that. Anyway, so I'm sitting here. And I really don't have any car buddies left. And uh, my former business partner is a big turd. You know, anybody that has ever counted on him, he's just turded on him. And stabbed him in the back. And his mommy pays for everything. His mommy's rich. Uh, his mommy bought him a house to get him out of her house after uh, him and his ex split after he lost everything he had. Because instead of going to work at his day job, which he was a heavy equipment operator in the operator's union. He was, uh, he wasn't going there every day and seeing if he could get work or showing up to that company that he worked for every day and seeing if he could get work. He had excuses and then uh, he would spend half his day with his woman that he was with, that he had a kid with. And then he'd come to the shop and he'd make stupid investments instead of paying his house payments. So he lost his house. Well, then, she got pregnant by somebody else, and he paid for an abortion. And then she dumped him for some other guy, and he lost his mind and just went wacko. And started screwing everybody over in the world. I think he's actually on drugs these days, but I can't prove it. I'm not going to mention his name, but it's like this. If anything ever happens to him, I'm suspect, number one, even if I was in Mexico with a thousand witnesses. Uh, the cops will just come look for me. That's because a lot of people know what he did to me, and a lot of people know that his mama has paid people to protect him and to make sure that if anything ever happens, they're coming to look for me. So basically, I don't have anybody help me with the project. I was talking with JC about getting a frame and stuff, but man, I'm, not, I'm just thinking, unless I were to do it at the man's house, drive up to his house and do a project with him, I probably don't even have any way to get it done. It's just dreaming at this point. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to get in a situation where I've got another project that nobody will help me with. And I need expert help. And you don't know what it's like. Because I was the guy, you know, people's cars break down at 4 in the morning. They still call me up. Um, I'm the guy that everybody expects to fix everything, and I'm the guy that everybody expects to do them favors, you know, and when their back's against the wall, they always call me. Even 10 years ago, when I was down in Florida, uh, Christmas of, uh, 2004, I was down there, and, uh, it was like December 21st or 22nd, my phone just started blowing up. Well, Dayton had got over a foot of snow overnight, and every wrecker in town had like a two-day wait list. People were getting stuck in the whole city of Dayton, inner city of Dayton, the streets weren't plowed. I was in Florida, I was making money by directing guys I knew before drive trucks to people that were stuck and needed pulled out. Uh, yeah, people I hadn't talked to and uh, 10 years were calling me because I've had this number since 99. They're calling me in Florida. And I'm telling them I'm in Tampa, Florida. Well, I was actually in Hudson, which is north of Tampa. And I'm not going to be home for a few days. And that was true because I 75 was closed from Walden, Kentucky to Cincinnati for a few days. I got to Walden, Kentucky. Uh, it was Christmas Eve, about. 10 at night and uh no i'll tell you about it. got there about nine at night and uh about midnight or midnight 30 they said 75 is open to cincinnati well, i was in that first group of 100 trucks out of that truck stop i was driving a uh, rented budget truck and uh, i made it uh, parked it on the street in my neighborhood in Old North Dayton on an unplowed street. And the snow on that street was 24 inches deep and there were three cars that were stuck in the middle. I went down to the intersection, went through, backed up, and then parked for a crossroad from my place and had to get a shovel, dig out my car that my buddy had been 
driving my mom around then and uh, got a flat tire and uh, messed my tire up and uh, tried to take the tire off and messed up some of the lug nuts because you didn't know loose from tight. So I had to dig it out, get the jack under it, change it, and uh, then I had to go drive and get the S10 Blazer. I had to drive 40 miles in snow to go get the S10 Blazer. Um, come back, and I used that thing for a week and made three or four hundred dollars pulling people out. But you know, that's the way things go. Um, Every time it snows real bad, I'll get somebody calling me up, asking my, if my family still has a snowplow service for where my parents plowed snow in the late 70s and early 80s. There's still people, and they will somehow find me on Facebook. Because my last name's Bendig, and uh, there's not that many Bendigs in Ohio. Although there's four guys that are named Charles Bendig in the state of Ohio. Go figure, right? Anyways, uh, yeah, people still find me and stuff, but I don't have people to help me do anything. Anytime I get a helper, I can't get a reliable helper, and I can't get a helper that wants to help me do projects. Uh, I, I miss mudding. I miss off-roading. I just don't have any way to put one together right now. And uh, going to some of these shops around here, Uh, I don't like stuff put together, bailing wire and chewing gum, and that's what a lot of these places do, uh, especially these so-called diesel shops around here. Uh, there's, for every one that claims that they know what they're doing, they're doing your stuff right, out of every, you know, let's say 20 that claim it, there's one guy out there that actually knows how to work on light duty diesels and do it properly. Now, the rest of them are just clueless hacks and they're no more knowledgeable than me. They just bought some special tools off the snap-on truck and they're out there messing people's trucks up and changing stuff people don't need and not knowing how to diagnose the problems. Alright, this is about at the end of my phone memory and I'm rambling. And yeah, JC, I'm rambling like you should have been. But, uh, I guess, uh, my buddy JC Smith Projects, uh, somebody's been getting on youtube and uh, marking his stuff as inappropriate content or something of that nature that kind of irks me the man does not cuss at all nice guy um talks to people does live streams answers people's questions I actually care all about every comment people make during his live streams because he wants to see them and answer them okay not one of these guys on YouTube that's cursing and swearing and calling everybody this, that, and the other and making lewd gestures and, uh, you know, doing really dangerous things or giving really, really bad advice. Um, he, he's, you know, he's a nice guy. Uh, without wanting to jinx myself here, you know, I'd probably feel safe leaving my wallet in his hand. I mean, man makes more in a year than I do. Why does he need my money? You know, that's the kind of guy I'm pretty sure he is. Even if he was broke and you left your wallet in his hand, he's not going to be tempted to take it. He's not the kind of guy out there doing negative things and ripping people off. So when people are reporting him for no reason it, it kind of irks me and it irks me that it irks him and he's not making videos or at least he didn't make one before he left for or i don't know if he he if he is uh any well i shouldn't say but anyways uh yeah he's he got mad and he didn't make a video and i don't have my video to watch in the morning i ain't gonna have one for tomorrow morning which makes my me mad and make smoke come out of my ears so i'd like to find the guy that done it and have a conversation with him okay i have really exceeded my battery life on this phone and uh now y'all see what my ugly mug looks like and i'm gonna get off here before this camera breaks in this phone later youtube land